Now, here's an interesting situation. As I receive thank you notes from people, you know, who, who have been successful in their, in their interviews, including at Amazon, quite a few of those notes contain the following uh, statement. Hey, Dan, you know, I mean, I was preparing for those failure stories for quite a bit of time, and they did not ask me for any failures during my interview, so uh, I'm not sure what's going on here. Maybe they've changed something. Um, now, I want to clarify why do I say that these failure stories are so important for pretty much any behavioral interview. The main reason for this is because they are one of the most counterintuitive behavioral questions to answer, and once you master these, basically the other ones will become a lot more clear. And furthermore, there's also this, uh, this false track that many people are getting into that they misinterpret the the behaviors exhibited in those leadership principles. Um, you know, some people, for example, say that uh, earned trust is about ownership and, um, you know, our right a lot is also confused with ownership. And uh, this is the most, uh, this is the one that I remember uh, right now as the most common scenario. So uh, by emphasizing on these failure stories and by preparing proper stories, because those are between the hardest to to brainstorm for, and by the way, I also did a, a poll on that, and it was obvious to me that this was the case. So the point is that once you prepare those and you understand the expectations from such a story, it will be a lot more easier for you to understand the expectation from the other behaviors. So for example, if I ask you for a failure and you are mentioning a so-so story that is not actually, you know, maybe uh, you you missed some number on some report, but there was no big deal because you catch that five minutes before the presentation. And th these type of things, which are not true failures. So once you understand the behavior that you are exhibiting is not the right type of behavior, then what happens is that you oftentimes realize that maybe even your other stories about the other uh, questions or uh, principles in the case of Amazon are not as strong as you would have liked. So by comparing those failure stories with the others, you basically raise the bar uh, in terms of, of the quality of your answers. So this is one of the main reasons why I overemphasize on these failure stories. Now, of course, not everyone learns behavior interviewing this way. Personally, I found that this was one of the more successful approaches into getting into behavioral interviewing uh, quickly. Now, of course, there's uh, various other options such as preparing the stories first and overemphasizing on those stories to be high quality and only then moving on to the to answering actual questions and linking them to the principles. But uh, still, the if you start with what's least, uh, with, with what's not as easy as, as you would have thought, the probability that you will uh, get the idea faster significantly increases. So this is why I always recommend about failure stories. And uh, statistically speaking, uh, it's they're not, I would say they're their top five most commonly asked behavioral questions in job interviews. Uh, but statist statistically speaking, they're not, uh, they're not the first, they're not the most asked. So just to clarify that the main reason why you'd want to prepare the failure stories is because you want to become good at behavioral interviewing, not because uh, they must ask you for any failure stories during any job interview.